to prime or not to prime. I'm about to impart some information to all you DIYs out there on where you prime, what to prime, or undercoat, or if you even need it. What if I were to tell you everything that you know about primers is completely wrong? Believe it or not, no one really primes anything these days. You just think that you do. The last time that I even used a real primer was around 25, maybe 35 years ago. I do remember one of my last jobs where I actually used a real primer. And it was when, shortly after I came to Australia in 1981, they were building Dream World. And every single one of those buildings was painted with oil-based products. And we did it the old fashioned way. Primer, undercoat, two coats of enamel. Watch to the end, I show you how and why you use an undercoat and how to handle the experts at your local paint store when they want to sell you extra paint and things that you don't need. Not too long ago, someone posted on one of my videos how to make your patches disappear, and they said that it would be better to prime the entire walls for a professional result. In the video, I only undercoated the patches and not the entire walls. Now really, there was no need to, and yet this person apparently was a professional painter, and so I told them otherwise. I posted it was a waste of time and not necessary to prime, or actually undercoat, the entire walls. Uh, you know what hit the fan from their subsequent post. I got character assassinated, called all kinds of names, and told I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So let me explain why this person was so wrong in their giving of incorrect information. I want to start off by discussing the myths surrounding primers and undercoats uh, amongst DIYs. First off, it seems every DIY jumps straight to the assumption that if one is going to do any kind of painting at all, then one must apply a coat of primer first, right? Well, let me tell you, unless you're painting over new raw timber outside, it's most likely you won't need to prime or undercoat anything. Now, a quick question, and be honest here, would you think you would need to prime or undercoat bare drywall, gyp rock, or even called plasterboard? Uh, would you think you need to prime those walls? Your paint specialist down at the corner paint shop will sell you primer, undercoat, cedar binders, whatever, stipulating that you must apply a primer or whatever that might be first. So who is telling you the truth? Hi, I'm Rick Michelle with another video from Invincible Painting Basics. There's no BS, just professional tips and tricks to help out the DIY home painter. If you aren't a subscriber, please consider subscribing, hit the bell, and please give this video a like. By clicking that like, you are helping out YouTube's algorithms to promote videos to others. So in a way, you are also helping me help out others, a win-win solution. The term primer and undercoat are usually interchanged as one and the same, and many just say the word primer when in fact it's an undercoat that they are referring to. They just don't know it. Hence all the confusion between primer and undercoats. Primers and undercoats are two different products used for two different reasons. At least it used to be. But today, you will be hard pressed to see even painting professionals using primers. So let's just consider primers an imaginary product at this point in time and not to worry ourselves over primer. Okay, so right now, no such thing as primer. Seriously, you will never ever find yourself needing a primer. You may need an undercoat, but even that, you probably won't ever have a need for that either. And take note here, when I'm talking about primers and undercoats, I'm talking about oil-based products, not the water-based ones, which technically speaking, there is really no such thing. I know, all those water-based acrylics and undercoats in the paint store. So again, who is telling the truth? Look, if you go back many, many years ago, you had to have primers and undercoats. There were no water-based painting products. It was all oil. One painted everything with oil-based enamel paints. One first primed the surface, patched and sanded, and, and you know, whatever prep was necessary. Then a coat of undercoat before finishing off with two coats of enamel. Now, all houses made of timber were painted using this method. For all you DIYers out there, the only time you will ever need an oil-based undercoat, the undercoats are usually called something like all-purpose undercoat or general-purpose undercoat. The only time you'll ever be using that is if you're thinking about using an oil-based enamel. And a quick word of warning here, it helps to have some experience when using an oil-based enamel. Even most painters aren't very good at using enamel, so be careful if you decide to give enameling a go. 
click on the card above or the link below in comments. I'll show you how I enamel flat doors. Now panel doors are painted almost the same, but there's more brushwork involved. Now can you see where we're going with all this? As paint technology advanced to using water-based products, the marketing kept with the need for primers and undercoats. Paint stores could sell the unsuspecting you another product for your paint project. When in fact these water-based undercoats aren't needed in most painting situations. Now if we go back to the mention of painting gyprock walls, professional painters have never used a primer or undercoat and simply apply two and sometimes three coats of the wall paint. That's it. Your first coat of wall paint, if you will, the undercoat, is because of this almost all water-based materials are self priming. It's been done this way for 40 or 50 years. If there was to be an issue, we would have known a very long time ago. This is actually inside my office. I painted these walls about 13 years ago, at least maybe 14 years ago. And apart from the crack here in the wall, and this is for movement of the house, and the tape is coming undone a tad bit, so I'm going to have to repair that when I repaint. But apart from that, no matter where you go in my house, there's no paint coming off the walls. There's no cracking, peeling, nothing. It just looks like this, apart from, you know, wear and tear. And that's two coats of water-based paint. This paint, being in Australia, is a, is a water base. It's a low-sheen acrylic. In the States, you'd probably be putting on an acrylic flat. Um, basically, the same paint, just a different sheen level. Two coats of paint. There's no undercoat on there. The first coat is the undercoat. So two coats of paint, and we've been doing this since, since I can remember, since I first started painting. We started painting before we were 15 years old. For you to have issues of paint coming off of, of gyprock or drywall or plasterboard as some call it, there's an underlying issue then, because other than that, there shouldn't be any problems whatsoever. You do not need an undercoat to put on your walls before painting. Two coats of your wall paint, maybe three if, if, if it's not covering. This is the outside of my home. Painted this 15 years or so ago. Two coats of paint, no oil-based or water-based undercoat or primers. The paint I use is just an exterior paint called uh, Weather Shield, made by Dulux. Uh, it's an acrylic, it's water-based. The first coat of paint may be just a little bit thinner. That's it, that's my, that's my primer. No primer, no undercoat. Now I've dealt with countertop painters, what I call them, all my life. Don't get me wrong, there's some really good ones out there, but believe me, on the same token, there are some really bad ones too. You're going to your local paint store to purchase your supplies. The last thing you want is to purchase materials that you don't really need. But that guy on the other side of the counter insists that you need such and such. The best thing that you can possibly do to prepare yourself is to know what you need. Order what you want, pay for it, and that's it. And I know a lot of you rely on that countertop person at the shop to guide you. And if you're comfortable with that, that okay, well, no worries. We probably got a good one. Hopefully you will deal with someone who knows what they are doing and have at least some painting experience behind them. Let's recap. If you're painting raw interior walls and they are drywall or plasterboard, uh, simply use your paint for all the coats that you will be applying. Oil-based or water-based undercoat is not necessary. If your walls are pre-painted, then all that is needed is a light sand and one or maybe two coats of your wall paint. Again, no undercoat of any type is necessary. Now, can you see now why the person who told me to prime the entire walls was way out of their league? And last, where is the only place that you are going to need an undercoat? Yep, when you will be using oil-based enamels for your finish. And I'm about to show you why an undercoat is so necessary when you're going to be using enamel. I have three different boards here, and they're, their boards are in, shape, in good shape. They're a bit dirty and dusty because they've been sitting around. And really, all I'm just going to do is give them a quick little sand and a dust. Now just pretend that these are your door frames or your window frames. In this case, your walls are this kind of timber maybe, and you're gonna paint the timber. I'm gonna apply one coat of oil-based undercoat. I'm only gonna go so far on each board. And then we're gonna wait 24 hours before we apply our gloss enamel. Remember, these are all oil-based products, and for those of you that don't know what that means, it means that you're gonna need either terps or paint thinner to either thin these or clean out your gear. 
And the reason why you used, you would use such products or you want your professional painter to use these products is because there is no finish like an oil, like an oil based enamel paint. We'll let that dry till tomorrow. We'll come back. We'll have to give that a sand and then I'll show you what we're going to do at that point. One of the first things you'll notice after putting a coat of anything on a piece of timber is it, we, it's what we call raises the grain. It's, it's pretty rough. And before you put your enamel on there, the first thing you want to do is sand that nice and smooth. I use 180. You'll get away with 150. 120 would be too much cut. This is a gloss enamel, doesn't matter if it's a semi-gloss or eggshell, matte finish, it doesn't matter. It's still the same process. What I'm going to do here is we're going to paint over what we've already undercoated, but we're going to go a little bit further. And on these three different pieces of timber, just, just so you can see the real reason why you put an undercoat on first. It's been 24 hours, it's dry. Um, I like the feel of enamel, but as you can see on all three boards, exactly the same thing has happened. Where we've got the undercoat, it looks very nice, it feels very nice, and where it's got just the oil-based enamel, it's penetrated into the wood, if you will, and that's exactly what undercoats do. They simply allow the enamel to sit right on the top. And what enamels do is called flow. It flows. Even though you put it on, it still flows. It's still just slightly moving a little bit. And that's why you get such a nice finish on with using enamels. And I'm not advocating to use enamels. Most of you will never ever use enamels. Um, they're hard, they're difficult to use. Even most paint, even a lot of painters don't know properly how to use enamels. 